I don't think there has ever been a phone that got me as excited about hardware as the old Samsung S series active line. The fact that I could have an S5 flagship phone with a more rugged exterior and all the same specs? Well, there's never been one thing that I hated more than worrying about your phone breaking and having to put a bulky case on it. The Galaxy S Active line always took care of that. Those phones were rugged, removable battery beasts with more than enough reason to draw in flagship users who abuse their phones on the daily. It's been roughly six months since Samsung launched a close cousin of the Active line, the Galaxy X Cover 6 Pro, which is another rugged phone that can definitely take a beating. But after checking out other newer enterprise phones like the Lenovo ThinkPhone by Motorola, does the X Cover 6 Pro still hold up six months later, or should you think about a different phone instead? Let's talk about it. You hear it all the time, the saying goes, this ain't your dad's pickup truck, this ain't your grandpa's computer, this ain't your dad's phone. Well, it refers to a product which is so much more advanced than the stuff that the boomers were using. Except this one, it's supposed to be that throwback. The X Cover 6 Pro is a phone that's made for people who don't like phones, don't want them for their cameras, could do without the hassle, and just need something that darn well works like it's supposed to and gives you the ability to use it in the way that you want to. The 6.6 inch 1080p 400 ppi display features a large bezel that makes this phone look sturdy like a tank with Gorilla Glass Victus Plus. You get a standard 128 gigabyte internal storage with micro SDXC expansion slot under the plastic back panel, which you'll only be able to access once you easily slide out the 4,050 milliamp hour removable battery, which gets up to 25 watts of charging in the US and only 15 watts in the international version. Finish that all off with six gigabytes of RAM and you've got a no nonsense enterprise phone. The downward facing speakers are honestly nothing to write home about. They sound about as bad as a dog slurping water on a hot day. It's very muddy sounding, awkward, and you just want the sound to stop. So just use some Bluetooth headphones or corded headphones that, that you've had kicking around for years because this phone, folks, has the 3.5 millimeter jack. You do, however, get plenty of buttons, five to be exact, which don't require a ton of knowledge to operate. On the top, there's a programmable button, which comes preset to turn the flashlight on and down the side is a big red button called the X cover button. This button is also programmable to use for push to talk or scanning programs. On the other side of the phone is a lock button, which houses your fingerprint scanner and the volume up and down keys. Now this phone really isn't made to be your kid's Instagram and TikTok taking phone. So the cameras aren't super important, but let's go through them anyways. On the front, there is a 13 megapixel selfie camera, which doesn't put out the greatest pictures, but it will do just fine for Zoom calls or other types of video call. On the back, you get a 50 megapixel main f1.8 wide, as well as an eight megapixel 2.2, 123 degree ultra wide field of view. You'll be able to shoot 4K at 30 frames per second or 1080p also at 30 frames per second. And as you'd expect from an eight megapixel ultra wide with a smaller sensor, it might be worth just avoiding switching to this one unless you really need the angle. And overall, the 50 megapixel main even struggles in dark conditions. If you need photos of a burst pipe, sharing the framing of a job site or anything else, as a utility tool, these cameras will definitely do the trick, but not much more than that. And Samsung says that its frame is built to withstand up to 1.5 meters of drop onto concrete and has an IP68 weather resistance. Samsung even sent us a kit to test out just how rugged this thing is against dirt, drops, temperature, and water, showing that they still believe that this phone is a powerful workhorse. Through the dirt and water spray, this phone could still read finger touches through the work gloves that we had on, and the phone kept on working. Overall, the X Cover 6 Pro is still a solid enterprise phone. It's a work phone that doesn't pretend to be anything else. But six months later, is this phone still worth picking up? The long answer, it's complicated. The Lenovo ThinkPhone by Motorola, which I keep coming back to, has a few better specs than this one, 
feels a little bit more retail friendly and overall it's a pretty killer phone. But when it comes to bang for your buck, honestly, the much more palatable 599 USD for the Xcover 6 Pro should still hit a sweet spot for the right audience. The short answer, yes. Six months later, the Xcover 6 Pro is still worth picking up. It ain't super pretty, but it gets the job done. And yes, it is definitely your dad's phone. But thanks for watching guys. If you found this video helpful, hit the thumbs up, subscribe to see more. And until next time, I'm Ryan from Authority Media. Be kind and we'll see you on the next one.